Welcome back to WCCF Tech TV. This is Keith again, and today the wait for Vega is over. We did announce the other day that it did launch and it was shipping out. And luckily, at this point, a couple of well noted reviewers, uh, Ryan over at PC Perspective and Steve over at Gamers Nexus, both have their hands on one R and are doing extensive teardowns and testing of the cars to see how they perform from top to bottom. Now the first review of the AMD Radeon Vega Frontier Edition graphics card was posted over at PC Perspective. Again, we'll put a link to that in the description. The review covers a lot of interesting details such as power consumption, average clocks, and performance of the card in gaming and professional workloads. The AMD Radeon Vega Frontier Edition has been the most talked about GPU of this month, and for good reason. It's based on AMD's Vega 10 GPU, which is their latest high-end chip after a long wait of around two years since Fiji. Now the Vega 10 GPU replaces the Fiji XT GPU and is a targeted at the enthusiast gamer and high performance professional workstation and compute oriented markets. Vega is AMD's entry back into enthusiast gaming and the Frontier Edition is the first consumer card to feature the new core. In terms of specifications, the Vega 10 GPU inside Radeon Vega Frontier Edition comes with 4096 stream processors clocked at 1382 MHz base and a 1600 MHz boost to deliver 13 T-flops of FP32 and 25 T-flops of FP16 compute performance. There's also 16 GB of HBM2 VRAM which comes in two stacks which is 8 gigs per stack. The graphics card has a total rated bandwidth of 483 gigabits per second, which is lower than the 512 on Fiji. It also features a pixel fill rate of 90 gigapixels and a die size of the Vega 10 GPUs estimated at around 27.85 millimeters by 27.25 millimeters, which is a total area of 564 millimeters squared. The package size is 47.3 millimeters by 47.3 millimeters, or an area of 2,237 millimeters squared. The fully exposed PCB shots by PC Perspective shows that the card is fairly large and has a typical full length, full form factor. The card, even while based on HBM2 solution, makes use of the long PCB, which is indicative of the fact that the extra yet underutilized space is therefore more for a beefy heatsink solution, keeping the card running at optimal thermals. But even with such a large heatsink in place, the card throttles, so it might be likely that users can expect a Radeon RX Vega model to be shipping with liquid cooling solutions, even at the reference model. The AMD Radeon Vega Frontier Edition is shown to have gaming and synthetic performance a bit lower than that of the NVIDIA GTX 1080, but in professional workloads, the card is somewhat comparable to the Quadro P5000, which uses the same GPU configuration as the GTX 1080. Although optimized for professional workload, the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition is an impressive graphics card from a technical standpoint, but is failing to showcase the actual potential of the extra tech, features, and upgrades that were received over the Radeon R9 Fury X and Real World Benchmark. However, the real tests begin after SIGGRAPH 2017, when AMD plans to launch the gaming variant, the RX Vega. We'll have to wait until then to see if there's any real improvement for gamers, and uh, that's where I think we'll see the real magic in the gaming department. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we'll catch you in the next video.